Oh my god. All right, I'm getting vibrated already. Oh my goodness. Can you guys hear it? It feels like you guys should be able to hear it. It is it is rumbling from the engine. This is going to be good fun. All right, we should like turn down the intensity, I think, of this thing just a little bit. Just a smidge. But that's kind of cool. I mean, that's kind of cool. One thing I've always wanted to try out in my sim rig for a more immersive experience is haptic feedback. So I'm super excited to have the HF8 haptic feedback pad from Next Level Racing here with me today to give a try. Next Level Racing have recently pushed a software update for the feedback pad. So we're also going to be trying the latest and greatest software to figure out if this thing might be right for you. Let's go ahead and get this unboxed, set up in the sim rig and see how we like it. Now, full disclosure, I am a part of the Next Level Racing Affiliate Creator Program, and as such, I've gotten the haptic feedback pad for free. That said, Next Level Racing gets no creative or editorial control over this review video, and all the opinions and thoughts are my own. I always want to give you guys my true thoughts and opinions so you can make informed decisions. I would never want you to purchase something based on something that I said that isn't right for you, so I always want to give you my honest and true feedback. That said, if you do decide to make a purchase from Next Level Racing, I have an affiliate link down in the description below, along with a 5% discount code to help you save a little bit of money. Okay, let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, a few days ago is when I actually set up the haptic pad on my sim rig, but I stupidly did not turn on my external microphone to actually record audio. So I'm going to try to summarize what some of the videos I already shot are actually saying. But when you go ahead and actually unbox the HF8 haptic pad, the first thing you'll run into is this nice packaging that Next Level Racing always does. There's a little carrying handle in case you're purchasing this in a store making it just easier to carry out. Once you crack that box open, you'll see that the haptic pad is wrapped up in some nice plastic and you'll find a little box that contains your power adapter. Now, the nice thing that Next Level Racing do with the power adapter is they actually provide different adapters for any sort of plug that you might have in your region. And these adapters actually twist out and pop out and a new one can pop right back on. So it doesn't make a super long connection. You don't have to have a really beefy adapter. It kind of works natively with that power block. Now, once you pull the haptic pad out of the box and unwrap the plastic, you'll see it's folded in half and held within the inside of it. You'll see all the cabling connections, including the USB and audio jacks, the power connection and your controller as well as all the securing straps and a nice manual in case you need to reference that for anything that maybe isn't working well or that you can't quite figure out with the haptic pad. So overall, everything you'd expect from Next Level Racing Packaging, nice and protected for you to receive a product in good condition. And setting up your haptic pad is quite simple. All you have to do is disconnect the straps and go ahead and slap that haptic pad onto whichever seat you're going to use it in. And you can slip those straps right over top of your headrest. Go ahead and click those into place and do the same thing for both the like hip area and leg area straps. So you have a nice secure connection with the haptic pad. It's not going to be sliding around in whatever your seat you're using it on. You can then go ahead and tighten up all of these straps and they even have these little elastic bands where you tighten up the straps to make sure that you can neatly organize the extra bit of straps after you're done tightening it. But something that Next Level Racing always seems to consider cable management or tidying things up to make sure that it doesn't look a mess after you've set it up. So kudos again for them considering this. One thing I will say is that the straps that they use actually work really, really well. I haven't noticed the haptic pad sliding around at all, and it does stay in the position that I've set it up in after tightening down those straps. So while it's a very basic setup, it actually works really well in terms of not having any sort of wiggle or play in it to make sure that it gives you a nice consistent experience. After that, you'll want to just connect your power adapter up to the wall and plug that into the cables that are hanging out of the side of your haptic pad. I routed them through the little handhold on my seat. That just seemed like 
the nicest place to kind of get that stuff through in a relatively nice and managed setup that's not too messy or crazy. Uh, the next thing I did is I looked at the connections and I went and plugged in the USB connection as well as the headphone connection. So I could use this in either USB or audio mode if I wanted to. And I hooked my headphones up to the audio jack that they provide that allows you to still get audio passed through the haptic pad into your headphones. And just the disclosure there is there is a little bit of audio interference when you use the pass through audio into your headphones. So I ended up disconnecting that and plugging my headphones back in mainly because I found that USB mode was just the correct option for me because I use it with sim racing and I want that more detailed feedback that's based on telemetry and not on audio signals. But if you're using this with a game system like Xbox or PlayStation, or you wanna use this with music or movies, uh, then you will need to use that pass through audio connection so that the haptic pad can receive audio. Now you can also switch between modes directly from the controller of the haptic pad which is really nice all you have to do is just press and hold down this button and that light will start blinking and that means you're in audio mode and if you press and hold it again and that light becomes solid that means you're in usb mode now the other thing you can do here is you can adjust the overall intensity of this thing so if the light is green then it's on the lower intensity side and if that light goes red it's on the higher intensity side. If you're colorblind, I'm sorry, it might be a little bit difficult to tell the difference. So maybe something that Next Level Racing should consider making this a little bit more colorblind friendly. I should also talk about the materials of the seat. It's this like leathery, kind of faux leathery material that's perforated, which gives you some breathability and it, it is quite comfortable, but I do feel like it was still hot. My sim racing seat is already hot. It's like a fake sort of Alcantara suede material. And I sweat a lot in that. So I suspect if you're using like an office chair that had a lot of mesh, you might find that the haptic pad is just a little bit more sweaty than your very breathable office chair, for example. As you can see, the setup of the haptic pad is pretty straightforward at a surface level, getting this thing mounted up onto your seat and plugged into your computer and your wall. Pretty straightforward, really easy to set up, not a whole lot of fuss. The thing I will point out is the haptic pad is quite thick, so it will actually change your seating height and position. This is actually one thing I did remember to record audio for. Okay, so I just got the pad added to the seat and sat down in the rig, and one thing I didn't really anticipate is how much height the uh, the pad actually adds to the racing seat. So now is what I need to do is actually lower my seat in my seat brackets. Luckily, I'm not on the lowest setting of my seat brackets. Otherwise, I'd have to adjust my pedals and my uh, my wheel uh, height. But um, yeah, so we're just gonna go ahead and lower the seat. I think just by the the one notch down that I have available to me in the uh, in the seat bracket should be enough. But uh, yeah, I gotta go go ahead and do that now. Uh, and then I realized that actually my seat bottoms out on the sim rig chassis, so I can't actually use those lower holes on my seating bracket, which meant I, I sat up a little bit higher than I was used to uh, with the haptic pad. But I just moved my seat back a little bit to get me a little bit further back from the wheel, and that kind of fixed my distance to the pedals and my distance to the wheel. So that was a nice and easy solution. But it's just something to consider that. The haptic pad will change your seating position slightly and you'll just want to watch out for that and you might need to make adjustments accordingly longer term i may actually end up changing my wheel monitor and pedal heights to kind of get back to the full seating position that i was at before but as of right now i've kind of just kept it as it is moved my seat back on those seat sliders and it's been working really really well that way also Okay, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do if you do wanna use the Next Level Racing software is just go up to their website. And in this little settings menu, you're gonna go ahead and go to drivers and downloads to download that software. Now on the drivers and downloads screen, you are going to need to enter your serial number for your haptic pad. Uh, they do say that you can download this software to get your serial number, but I tried that out and it did not work with my haptic pad. So I ended up having to type the number in from the back of the controller 
as opposed to getting the software to detect it. So I don't know if Next Level Racing knows that this doesn't work, but yeah, just keep that in mind. You're gonna have to be able to access your controller, maybe just take a picture of it or something like that. Uh, so you can enter it in to download their software more easily. Once you enter in that serial number, you're going to get the option to download the uh, software. Uh, both of them are beta builds. I'm using the latest beta build, uh, which should give you access to that updated refresh rate. Now that software, when you install it, is called HFS, and this is what it looks like. So you can actually see that the haptic pad is connected. You can set your intensity here and even toggle between audio mode or, or USB mode if you want to use it with one of the SIM titles. And you can search for the SIM title you want to use up here, uh, but it will also kind of automatically detect that. The other thing you could do is you could test the intensity by clicking these. So now all these motors are vibrating my body. Now, the other thing you can do is you can go in and select the actual SIM title you want to use and adjust your profile from here. Within any particular SIM title, you have a profile that you can adjust based on the sensations that you want to feel. So things like suspension travel, ground effects, engine RPM speed, etc. Uh, you can also import and export these profiles and next level racing does have a spot in their discord for you to share your profiles if you decide to do that um, this one that i have here is based on the maestro profile i don't really know what that means uh, but the only difference that i made from the maestro profile to uh out of the box to what i'm using is i turned on abs active now within each of these you can set the intensity of each individual effect and within that you can actually help configure which of the haptic feedback motors are activated during that time so it really just kind of depends on what you want uh this front left front right rear left rear right these are actually going to be the ones on, on your booty uh, you can see they kind of map out over here and you can still click those motors to get vibrations there just to make sure you are uh, verifying that the one you want to vibrate is the one you want to use. So overall, I think the setup in the next level racing software suite is actually pretty good. You can't add any other effects here. You can't customize it, but it gives you a nice set of base effects to work off of to give you a good baseline to play around with things. Now, one thing I will say for the general intensity level is uh, is I initially tried it, I think at like 75% intensity and where I found a sweet spot was actually all the way down at 25% intensity. 25% intensity is the intensity that I would suggest starting out with. Uh, when I went to 75%, intensity i was just getting way too much from the haptic pad and it was a bit distracting now the other software option you have is to use sim hub which is a free to use software that controls a ton of different sim racing related hardware items like base shakers ddus all sorts of things so getting sim hub regardless is very useful but you can also have sim hub control your haptic pad as well so if you don't want an extra piece of software and you already just use sim hub that might be the best way to go for you and i'll show you how to set that up here and once you've downloaded sim hub you'll see this and so to set up your haptic pad the thing you want to do is go down to shake it motors over here on the left hand side and then motors output and you'll see this force feedback pad slash next level racing hf8 haptic gaming pad and you'll see that this is already turned on and if we click this little drop down here we'll get all the different effects that we can turn off or on here you'll see like you can configure which motor is going to vibrate for each particular effect but not necessarily a checkbox to turn those off and on and i'll talk about that in a second but one thing you can do here as well is you can get a little more a little bit more granular and actually adjust the gain for each specific motor for those effects i don't really think that's a necessary thing to do but it is just a nice extra bit of customization now you can go ahead and just click test now so similar to the haptic pad image that was in next level racing software this is how you can feel the vibration of each of those motors. And it's sort of hard to see, but if you look at that little graph, you can see a little purple spike that, uh, that indicates how much information is going to that motor and how much it's vibrating. 
Now to get any of these effects to work with the haptic pad, you have to turn on the effects. And this is something that I was confused about for a while. I tried this for a day or two and it was so baffled as to why I could click test and it would work. And then uh, when I would get into the sim, it wouldn't work. And let me show you the really important part about this, which is actually how to turn on those effects. And so to turn on those effects, you need to go into the effects profile tab. This might be super clear to you, but I am a little bit of a goober and, uh, and I just completely spaced on this. So within here, you can actually turn on the effects that sim hub will listen to from the simulator so i did abs active gear shifts road impacts road rumbles which will give you things like curbs wheel locking and wheel slip but there are a ton of other things here including like simulated road textures rpms road vibrations all sorts of stuff and each of those specific effects can have their level adjusted just like they can in the next level racing software the thing that you can do here that is way more customizable is SimHub allows you to tap into a ton of different effects and even add your own effects by clicking this add effect button if you so choose. And you can go ahead and look through their extensive API set to, uh, to decide on what effect you might want to add. So SimHub is a little bit more powerful, a little bit more customizable than the next level racing software. And I would say if you already use SimHub, this might be the little bit better way to go just because you don't have to run an extra piece of software. That said, I like the next level racing software for this. I used that one and it worked well. I've used SimHub and I like it and it's worked well. I'm probably gonna stick with SimHub though, simply because I already run SimHub for my digital dash. Okay, so with all that said, let's go ahead and just jump into the sim real quick and I'll walk you through the sensations I'm feeling when based on my configuration so you kind of get an idea of what the software is doing and what the haptic pad is giving you based on what you turn on. Let's go ahead and drive the F4 car around Sebring to get a lot of different bumps and road feels and we'll talk about like one setting in particular that Sebring really highlights well, which is the road vibration setting. Uh, turning that on and off uh, will give you dramatically different levels of feedback while you're driving versus not. All right, so here we are in the F4 car coming out of the pits. And, uh, and one thing, you can see the car is bouncing a little bit and I am getting a little bit of feedback from suspension travel, but there are a lot of bumps that I'm not feeling. Now, if I go ahead and drive over to this curb, I get constant vibration there. In the grass, I get constant vibration, and that's because I have the setting on that tells the sim to give me those rumbles both from curbs and from grass, and those feel quite nice. It's nice to touch a curb like that, feel when you're on and off of the curb. If, you, uh, if you've nipped the grass over there, knowing that you've nipped the grass, uh, especially like under braking, if you've touched grass a little bit, it's helpful usually to know that. Now, Let's go ahead and just park it real quick. So we already do have road impacts, which gives us stuff based on wheel impacts on the road. And we have the rumbles for curbs and grass. But now if we turn on road vibration, all of those bumps that Sebring has, we're gonna start feeling those a whole lot more. And now that's gonna be based on suspension travel. So now without touching curbs, I'm getting a lot more constant vibration. All the little bumps that we're hitting, I'm starting to feel vibrations in my butt from those because those are the haptic feedback sensors that are being told to activate whenever we feel that. So for gear shifts, I feel that both in my back and my butt because all of the haptic feedback sensors are told to operate. So the cool thing about these haptic, the haptic feedback pad as well is that you have eight different haptic feedback motors which means that you can actually get really granular information. For instance, when I go over in the grass on the left side, I'm feeling that on the left side of my body instead of a single base shaker that would only just be able to vibrate and not tell you specifically where you should be feeling that. So what's kind of nice about this is when you start to do things like wheel lockups, for example, you can feel exactly which wheels are locking up because you could have individual haptic feedback motors only vibrate for the wheel that's locking up. So if I just lock up my front tires, 
I feel those vibration motors on the front tires locking up and not the rear vibration motors because the rear tires aren't locking up. Uh, so the control that you have over each of the motors is actually quite nice because is what ends up happening is you end up getting useful information from the vibration. It's not just that you're getting a level of immersion, you're also actually getting information that can be useful for you making adjustments and driving faster when you're trying to find things like the limit of brakes. So the settings can be quite granular, meaning that the motors that you're sitting on, the four motors that you're sitting on could translate directly to the four wheels of the car. And you could use the vibration motors in your back to give you different sets of information or relevant sets of information. Like with those gear shifts, I get vibrations because when you're in a race car, you do the gear shift, you feel that through your entire body, not just your butt. So on top of getting extra information based on what's happening with the car, you get a larger sense of immersion because the information that you're getting is much more granular and translates naturally to what the car is doing. So as someone who races in real life in hobby series, I really appreciate getting that extra little bit of immersion and extra information that you miss out on in the sim because you're not actually physically moving around. Now, the advantage that this approach has over, say, a single base shaker is that you can get that granular feedback. You know when the front right is doing something versus the front left. If you had a single base shaker on your seat, your only real option is to vibrate that base shaker for all of those different sensations, but there's not vibration coming from a different location until you actually spread out to having multiple base shakers. So for the cost and what you're getting with this haptic feedback pad, you're actually getting a lot of extra information that you might not get otherwise going with a different solution. And so this is a good point just to talk about whether or not this thing is actually right for you to try out. And I just think that really depends on if you're interested in haptic feedback or not and what your current setup situation is like as well as what your current budget is like. One thing I really like about this thing is that it's super easy to set up. It just slips onto your seat. So you could use this if you're in a gaming chair or a full blown sim rig like I'm in and it would still work, which is great. It has a wide variety of applications and anyone can use it because we're presumably all sitting down when we're using the simulator. Uh, the downside of it, I will say, is that it does change your seating position slightly, as I showed you earlier in the video. The way I actually resolved that uh, was just by sliding my seat back. So I am actually sitting up a little bit higher than I normally do in the sim right now. And that mainly is down to the fact that I couldn't lower my seat. So if I wanted to have the same height, I'm actually going to have to raise my wheel and pedals and monitor to accommodate that to get back to that original relative seating position. So it does change your seating position slightly, whereas like adding a base shaker or a couple base shakers to your chassis won't force you to have to make seating position adjustments. The other thing I really like about it is you have the physical controller and that physical controller allows you to adjust things on the fly and adjust the intensity of the vibrations you're getting. So if you're driving, you're just like, I'm just getting too much information. You can go ahead and turn that down. Or if I'm not feeling it enough in that situation, you can turn those right back up and you're going to get more intensity with those vibrations. I also like the fact that there's an audio mode on this and all you have to do is plug in the haptic pad to your headphone output and boom, any audio that comes through that is going to translate into haptic pad vibrations as long as you have it set to use audio mode. It also gives you the headphone plug on the other end. So if you use any of your monitors like I do, then you're not going to have to figure out a way to patch that through. They've already done that for you. That said, when you go through the haptic pad with your headphones, there is a little bit of audio interference that you get, which is something that was a little bit annoying to me. The other thing I'll point out with the audio feedback and the audio mode is that is how you can use the haptic pad with something like an Xbox or a PlayStation. As long as this is in audio mode, it will work with an Xbox or PlayStation based on the audio coming out of the audio jack for the Xbox or PlayStation, which is something that is, I think, just a lot harder to set up for bass shakers. Basically, what you're getting here is an all-in-one package. It's 
plug and play. It's super easy to set up. It's super easy to configure. And you're going to get a lot of extra information, especially if you've always wanted to try out haptic feedback. This feels like the easiest way to enter that world with the least amount of commitment in setting things up, which I really, really liked. It made it super easy to test and enjoy without too much head scratching other than my own stupidity with not understanding what I should be doing in SimHub. And obviously, Next Level Racing can't even be held responsible for that because their software just worked straight up out of the box. So if you are interested in using haptic feedback, I would absolutely 100% recommend this thing as an option for you. Like I said, having eight haptic feedback motors to give you as much detailed information as possible and as much specific information as possible is super nice. And when I've raced with the feedback and without it, I, I definitely notice it without it. So I am considering actually adjusting my entire setup to make sure that I can use the haptic pad in my seat all the time and still have the most comfortable seating position for me. I hope this review was useful for you. I hope that uh, this helped answer the questions that you need answered to decide if this is something that you want to purchase. Feel free to hit me up in the comments down below if you have more questions. I'll do my best to answer those and give you the information you need. But I do plan on, I think, sticking with the haptic pad a little bit longer, fine tuning things a little bit more to see if I can get this to a place where I absolutely can't live without it. And I already kind of see myself going there just a little bit. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't liked, commented, subscribed, please consider doing that now. It's super helpful for the video and for the channel. I hope to see you soon, but until I do, take care of yourselves out there and have fun.